Looking for a Vanilla Plus mod pack so you can enjoy the new 118 updates? Want a unique feel to it? Maybe you should try this Peaceful Like mod pack. Welcome to the Mischief. I'm Valen, and this is the Bliss Pack Prospect, where I show you the ins and outs of this Minecraft 118.2 mod pack made by Vasky. So let's get to prospecting and dig in. So let's talk about the theme of this pack. It is Vanilla Plus, it is modded, but it is also very focused on your immersion and, well, keeping you somewhat alive. It has a very peaceful theme to it. That's really going to be covered in the mob section, which I will cover later on, but just know that it's a peaceful like mod pack and you will likely survive much easier in this pack than you would others. Going over the style and focus of this pack, well, there is some achievement hunting. Feel free to peruse these, or you can go with a little bit of light quest completion at your leisure, similar to the achievements uh, that is found in the little guidebook that uh, is offered in this. It replaces the old crafting book that is found in your own inventory, and it kind of walks you through a lot of the mod pack. Highly recommend that you do read this. Now, these are all suggestions. You don't have to complete any of the quests that are in there. It's very open and a peaceful plus mod pack. Also in this guide, you may see links to specific videos. Ours being in there, but also Direwolf20. He's doing an introduction to this mod pack. So if you want to see how you can get started in this pack, I highly recommend you go check it out. I'm also keeping links in the description below for others that might be exploring this mod pack whether it be an introduction, like Direwolf 20s, or if it's an actual Let's Play, like MC Jitties. Let's go over the pack weight. This is rather simple. It is a potato pack. Not meaning it's bad, just means that you can run it practically off of a potato. It uh, started up very quickly in under a minute from the title screen, and in just a few seconds going into the world itself. There is a server available for it. The stability, I would give it kind of like an A minus B plus. I did have the occasional crash here and there, but that was more or less just booting up the pack or uh, tweaking a few things myself. But it is really stable otherwise. As for popularity, well, it's brand new, being released uh, at the time of this video. So I really can't speak to how well it's doing on the charts. Is the author of Note? Yes, it's Vasky. Vasky's made Crucial 2, as well as many other very popular Minecraft mods. Specifically, Quark is the heart and soul of this mod pack. Let's talk about World Gen. Yes, you have your vanilla biomes, as most playthroughs do, but you also now have biomes aplenty, which adds in some really pretty extra biomes for you to explore and just kind of appreciate how absolutely beautiful the shaders that come in this mod pack can make them. On top of that, you have Young's different structures, buildings, and things like that that adds a lot of depth to the pack. Let's go over the difficulty. There isn't a lot of difficulty in this mod pack. It's more or less just learning what the mod pack itself has added or removed, which it really hasn't removed too much short of a lot of mob uh, behaviors, but it also gives you a lot of resources on how you can learn things. Specifically, if you look in your little guidebook, you're going to find out everything that you need to do. That is pretty much where all the difficulty is in this pack. That and choosing the difficulty when you set it up because things change considerably. Let's talk about mobs. This is the biggest change to this mod pack that there is, and that is for good reason. You will have vanilla and vanilla plus mobs in there. You'll also have the occasional new animals and creatures that you might find, plus the regular vanilla ones. But on top of that, you'll have no fire spread. There's no terrain damaging mob griefing, no illager patrols. Mobs will not spawn under skylight or basically blocks exposed directly to sky. And there are no regular spiders at all. Though if you are interested in finding spiders, you can still fight cave spiders from spawners. Now, as for the different difficulty levels that are non peaceful, mobs spawn and they spawn during thunderstorms and will attack if provoked, meaning you attack first, in all difficulties except for peaceful mode. Now under normal and hard difficulties, structure guarding mobs will attack. So if you have like pillagers that are guarding an outpost or the pig folk guarding your different bastions, you're going to end up having some that will attack you just by getting nearby, but you will also get a message that should give you a little bit of a warning. Also on normal and hard difficulty, you will get 100% zombie villager conversion rates. And only on the hard difficulty, mobs will attack 
with proximity, but their spawning rules will still apply as before. Let's go over the dimensions. The overworld, albeit extremely pretty with shaders, is not the only place for you to visit. There is, of course, the nether and the end. Now, the nether itself is absolutely stunning, I have to say. Um, it's the prettiest nether I think I've ever seen because the shaders and the setup and the biomes, it just adds a little bit extra in there that gives it that extra just beauty to it. And it's really nice to go there now. <laughs> the end itself is really spooky. Uh, the ambient glow in the background really lends itself to it. Going over tool and armor progression, there isn't much to it. It's pretty much vanilla plus a little bit of quark stuff in there. As for building options, you've got your vanilla stuff, plus some variant blocks, some uh, building tools in the way of like a hat that can help you to reach further, or a trowel that can allow you to randomize the blocks on your hotbar. And you do have ways of actually finding building blocks just by typing into the JEI or Just Enough Items interface in your inventory. By searching for block colors or different styles, you can actually kind of narrow things down in there. Let's talk about inventory options or your sorting stuff. Well, you've got your vanilla stuff. You've got your quirk items like crates, uh, which will allow you to store about 640 items, which doesn't sound like much, but when each one of them can have a damaged pick or a damaged bow, you can keep all of your like weapons and armor in one crate instead of having to have them across multiple. So if they have like a durability bar, you can put a ton of things into a cork crate. Cork pipes allow you to transfer things from one location to another, very convenient for some sorts of automation or simplifying it a little bit. And of course you have your cork backpack, which will allow you to just store things at the expense of your chest plate. Let's talk about maps. This is a little bit more complex. You've got your vanilla ones, but it kind of enhances that. And I, I really actually like how this is done. It gives a really good purpose for any excess amounts of iron because you can then make regular maps, use them or not, and add them to your atlas. Having an atlas on your hotbar will bring up like a little mini map, the vanilla Minecraft mini map. Yes, you can tag it with different things so that you can mark locations, but as you explore, if you have extra blank maps in your atlas, it will start filling those out as you go. This kind of makes things a lot more immersive, but you also have the option of opening up an overall map menu so you can scroll around and see where things are. It's really convenient and very immersive. I like this style, probably one of the best vanilla plus mapping options I've seen. Sadly, it does not work properly in the nether or the end at this time. Let's go over the death mechanic. In this, there is the quark totem of holding. Usually, when you die, this will hold all of your items so they're not strewn about the landscape, and you have one use of it. In this mod pack, instead, you have infinite uses of it. So if you keep dying, trying to get back to it, it's not going to just despawn because you died again. So you do get a lot more from it at this point, and it should put all of your items back where they were in your inventory. Is there any anti-griefing? I don't see any in here, so if you have like a PvP server or something like that, you will probably want to be aware of that. There's no mod overlap uh, worth mentioning in this case. Everything seems really, really well made and put together. There's no special requirements. It comes fully equipped with shader packs and resource packs installed and you can still run it on your potato, or at least I was able to run it at a very low RAM rate and have no FPS loss. Things of note. Uh, this is going to be a little bit of an extended section of things that uh, I feel need to be called out in the mod pack so you can most appreciate what it has to offer. First and foremost, it is a peaceful plus. I've already discussed this mostly in the mobs section. Built-in shaders I just mentioned, and that's really setting the scale for this. With that, it also adds in musical biomes. When you're flying around in the world on an elytra or down in the caves or in the nether, you're going to get different musical aspects, which really helps bring the mod pack to an immersive level, for me at least. And I did find that to be really nice. It is a vanilla to modded friendly mod pack as well. It takes you through a lot of the basic stuff that most of the experienced modded players take for granted. So those people can also skip over that content if they want. Specifically, it has a guidebook that will walk you through any of those issues that you might have or just stuff that you want to do or are unsure of. 
It has a starter kit option just by typing starter kit into this little toolbar on the side here, which is JEI. You can then see some of the items it recommends you explore and start with that you might otherwise overlook. And I feel that that is actually a really important thing in most mod packs. Usually they have a questing set up. In this case, it just says type in starter kit and explore these things, which is great because each of them is incredibly useful. While in the world, if you want to keep note of something you're working on or you forgot or whatever, you can type N for notes and add in any special number of notes that you want. You can pin them to your side and still be able to see through them. You can type in multiples. You can delete them, edit them at your whim. Now there's wild towers as well in the world. And at the top of these, you are guaranteed to find at least one paraglider which will help you glide down to safety in most scenarios and does not have a durability, so you're able to use this over and over again. There's also waystones at the top of these wild towers. You can use these to teleport from those wild tower waystone locations to any others that you've discovered in the world free of cost. There's no XP loss for this, uh, and there's no other warp stones or anything like that in the pack. It's just waystones. You cannot harvest them safely. You will destroy them, so don't bother. Just use them as is, make them accessible, and they can be shortcuts for getting around the world. Matrix Enchanting. This one is a little bit of a Tetris puzzle. You can just stack different enchantments onto different Tetris pieces, and you can rotate them around. It, at the very least, will store items and lapis in the enchantment table, but you can also add in a lot more customization for enchanting your tools and armor. I do like this a lot better than the vanilla mechanic of just guess and lose your XP levels because you got a whole bunch of useless enchantments on your, you know, epic sword or whatever that you just got. It, it is a lot more fun as well. If you're having troubles moving villagers around, you can now just grab a block of emerald and your villager problems disappear, whether they're trying to steal your bed or you just want to keep them in a boat or a safe spot away from other attackers. Tortoise farms. These fellas here are really cool. You can just use different methods to harvest materials from their back, but you do have to feed them specific foods in order for that to happen first. And this kind of eliminates the need for other farms as well. There's some really cool food mods in this mod pack. This is probably where the heaviest modding part comes from besides Quark, and that is Farmer's Delight, Farmer's Respite, and Overweight Farming. With these installed, you get a good selection of different kinds of foods that can give you buffs, benefits, or just make your entire cooking experience really immersive. Supplementaries adds in a ton of other really just vanilla plus extras that you can have, whether it be, you know, a globe that can spin and actually represent certain areas of your world, or you've got something like a clock that can tell you the time that looks a little bit more clock-like. Named pets can respawn. Now there's two kinds in here. There's your regular pets like I've named a cow or a pig or something like that. If it dies for some reason, you can then respawn it by taking the paper that comes from their death spot and clicking that onto a copper block to respawn the creature. Alternately, if it's something like a wolf or a horse that is a companion pet, then those will require a bandage in order to resurrect them from their downed state. All right, and now we get into the part where I talk about what this pack may be missing or could need. Uh, things that I have noted down are a way of mapping in the nether or the end would be nice. Looter. If you are currently playing this on a server, I find that it is important to have instanced loot so that you're, you know, if you jump in a week or so late or you're a casual gamer or something, you're not missing out on the loot that everybody else is. Now this could be game breaking for some, but it also might be shader breaking for others. Some kind of PvP griefing mod or anti-PvP griefing mod would be nice so you could claim your area and prevent others from like messing with you. But honestly, if you're playing with people that are going to do that in the first place, then you, you might want to like rethink things. Better inventory storage would be nice. I mean, the crate is really good, don't get me wrong, but sometimes with modded you get uh, too many items and you really need a way to sort them that's better than a vanilla chest. All right, is this pack unique? Yes. With the game changing, with the difficulty settings far more than usual, you can play unhindered or as hindered as you'd like. 
And the summary for this, I would say the Bliss Mod Pack takes the idea of a peaceful vanilla experience and expands on it to new heights while introducing you to the modding experience. It's a very fast, lightweight, and a beautifully set up pack with a very little modded knowledge needed, if any. If you're looking for an incredibly pretty Vanilla Plus experience, this has plenty to do and is built with your immersion in mind. And if you enjoyed this pack prospect and would like to see others like it, please be sure to give a like, comment, subscribe, come visit us on Twitch, click the notification bell, and until next time folks, I'll see ya.